Thank you, Sam and Lynn, for having me. This is great. Um, my name is Khalil, and my passion is helping you find your passion through storytelling and realizing that we don't have to become our past. By that, I mean Vancouver is a great city, but I think it could be better if we develop lasting and meaningful relationships with each other by realizing that everything we wear, our economic status, our iPads, our glasses, and our hairstyles can all be replicated. Right? I mean, the only you you have is you. That's the only thing nobody else has. And in some cases, that's a good thing. Um, but um, my, my passion um, in my day-to-day -day work is working with, uh, whether they're nonprofits or corporates or, or performing artists on stage, um, to help them find their stories. And I always begin with my own. You heard a little bit of it in the introduction. But I'd like to tell you a little a bit about it and then work backwards from there to, to let you know how it's affected me and a few important lessons I've learned along the way. For most of my life, my name was Nigger. My father um, was incredibly abusive, and I found my childhood to be nearly unbearable. I think there's very few people in this room who have stared evil in the eye as many times as I have. He didn't drink. He didn't do drugs. He was just pure evil. And my escape plan was to join the United States Air Force and be an architect. So, you see, you couldn't make this stuff up, right? It has to be true. So, I joined the Air Force. I signed on the dotted line. The recruiter lied to me. I'm a mailman stationed in Las Vegas. Because we need bases in Vegas to protect the hookers and the gamblers. I don't know why there's a base in Vegas. Anyway, there's an Air Force base in Las Vegas called Nellis. And I was stationed there, and I didn't want to be a mailman, so the only thing I knew that I could do better than draw was perform. I had done stand-up comedy. Stand-up comedy for me became a way to keep everyone at arm's length, to not have to deal with my past. My past was something that belonged back there, something that was painful, something I was ashamed of. And for years, for the next decade, I would continue to just shove my past backwards and, and not allow anyone to ask any questions about it by keeping them laughing. I toured with a group called Tops in Blue, and one of our traditions with Tops in Blue was at the end of every show, we would shake hands with the troops. Tops in Blue is an all-active duty performing troop, and we performed for the troops on the front lines. We were literally getting shot at on stage. And we, uh, the audiences of thousands would sometimes be sitting on tanks, and we would shake hands with each and every troop because we were the only entertainment they would get every year. All year long, we were the only entertainment these guys would get in the Middle East. And that lasting personal connection meant more to them than the actual show. So in the future, when I wrote my show called Basic Training, reluctantly, at the hands of a guy named Jeffrey Tambor, a respected character uh, actor in Los Angeles, I, I took his class and I got up on stage and started being funny and he stopped me and he said, oh, you know, we don't need any more funny black people in LA. You can throw a rock and hit a funny black man in LA. So if you're going to get on stage and tell a story, let the audience know what your past is. Tell us why you joined the Air Force. And I said, oh, yeah, that's a funny story. I said, okay, let me see. How did it go? Okay, okay. Um, the night before I left for basic training, uh, my mom told me that the guy who had abused me my whole life wasn't my real dad. She said, I probably just forgot. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's, that was exactly the, the reaction. He said, now we're listening. Now we care. Because you're being honest with us. And the relationship you develop with the audience by being honest is something that you can't get from laughter. And, w and as I reluctantly followed this, this road, I ended up taking the show to the Edinburgh Fringe and selling out twice. The average audience in Edinburgh Fringe is five people. It's, um, I, um, the producer of Bones, Barry Josephson, just optioned my life story for television on March 3rd of this year. And as I stand there at, the, at the, the exit of the theater and I shake people's hands, I realize that the, the things that they're telling me are, are inspiring me. They're telling me that I'm brave. They're like, Khalil, thank you for being so brave to tell your story. And that bothers me because I'm not brave. I'm scared as hell, just like everybody else, to let people know where I'm really from and, and what I'm really about. And so as these people would you know, a, a big burly Scottish guy would come up to me, and, he, and I, I'll never forget, he looked me dead in the eyes, big red beard, and his eyes were welling up with tears, and he said, I beat my wife. But because you had this, the courage to tell your story, I will stop. And that told me that sharing my past meant something. 
it meant more than I could possibly imagine. And so I decided to, to not only just perform, but to inspire other people to tell their, to, 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 to use their past to, to reach each other. Now, some of you might think, well, I'm not going to write a one-man show. Like, I damn near don't want to take a class. My life is way too messed up and nobody cares. But with social media, we all have a one-man show. What are we showing people on Facebook? The, pe- the, the person that we want them to see or who we really are? This is forever. The internet is forever. But our lasting relationships and the way we talk to each other and the way we treat each other, that's what really matters. What happens under all of this? What happens in your heart and behind your eyes is what's going to make a lasting impression, and you never know who you might help. And I just want to leave you with one more thought, because there's skeptics. There's always skeptics who say, nobody really wants to hear about anyone's past. That's why it's in the past. It's over. One of the most inspirational projects I've had an opportunity to work on with a a writer, a fellow writer named T.J. Daw and a colleague named Justin Suds is adapting PostSecret.com for the stage. For those of you who don't know, Post Secret is an is a ongoing community art project that uh, people since 2004 have been sending in their secrets on the backs of really beautifully decorated postcards anonymously to uh, Frank Warren, and he's put them on a blog. Every Sunday, there's new secrets, postsecret.com. To this day, 433 million people have visited this blog. He gets 200 secrets a day. Why are people sending their secrets in? Because we want people to know our past. We want people to know our secrets. Now, anonymous is obviously different than telling someone you know, but we have so much more to offer than the world tells us. And I think Vancouver is a great place to start. The word secret in Hebrew means come closer. Good night.